Hi, in this video, we are going to add new security rules and authenticate the user. So for now, the password field is filled with a plain text. So we are going to change it into the a random set of values. For doing this, we are going to use a new library that is called npm, that is called bcrypt.js. So I have already installed it using npm i bcrypt js bcrypt.js and here i have also used the bcrypt is equal to require bcrypt.js so in here we are going to use the schema method that it provide mongoose provide that is user schema dot pre it means that whenever a new method is to be called it will be called before it that is whenever we use the save method it will be called before it and it's a asynchronous process so we are going to use async process and it uses uh, es before es6 function syntax so we are going to use async function and in here we are going to use the parameter next which is called whenever the upper whenever the upper functionality will be done so in here we are going to use the const user is equal to this it this provides the document that is going to be saved in here so in here the user has a password so whenever a user password is being changed then we are going to run this if statement so in here if user dot is modified in in here we are going to just say the field that is password and in here we are going to use the big crypt so what's being changed that is the password being changed so user dot password is equal to it's an asynchronous process so we will be going to use await and in here we are going to use bcrypt method that is has and in here the string that is the request dot password that we are going to change and how many times we are going to run this algorithm that is like it's a stable that is we were we are going to use eight times so now that's it by doing this we can see if the password is being saved as a random set of values so for uh, look uh, for seeing this we are going to use the postman in here and we are going to create a new a uh, new file profile that is the jessica phone and now if we run this file we can see in here that the password is being stored as a random set of values now that's being done now we have to log in with the credentials that is being given like uh, email and password and now we are going to log in with this email and password but the password is being as a random set of values that is being provided by the bcrypt chairs so for doing this we are going to create a new endpoint uh, in here in app.js so in here we are going to create a new endpoint and here app dot post because we are sending the uh, users body in here users and login and it's going to be a synchronous process and we're going to use request dot response and now in here we are going to create our own predefined undefined user defined method in here so for this we are going to use uh, const user means first we are going to use it's a synchronous process so await we are going to perform on the user method and also the method that we are going to call it's a predefined method and we are sorry user defined method and we are going to define it let's say find by credentials and in here we are going to use two things that is request dot body dot email and also the request 
dot body dot password so what it will return it will return a user so we are going to use the same thing const user and uh, in here and that's it and then we are going to create a catch block and uh, provide the response let's say response dot status 400 dot sent so now we have to define this new function or a method so in here we are in the db.js we are going to define it so in here user schema as we are defining it into a model or an schema so we have to use the statics and the method name that is find by credentials and in here it's an asynchronous process so we are going to use async and in here we are going to provide email and password and now we are going to define so in here we are going to find the user by the find one method so we are going to use try and catch block so in here when you use const user await uh, user dot find one and the object that is email in the condition so now if there is a user if no if there is no user then we are going to throw an error throw an error throw a new error and if there is an like if there is an user we are simply going to check or compare the password that is given by the user with the password that is being stored in the uh, in the mongodb so in here we are going to use the following it's an asynchronous function that is await big crypt dot verify no dot compare and in here we are going to provide the request uh, sorry password and the user dot password oh one thing more that uh, yeah that's it yeah, user dot password and in here it's provide it's written a uh, true and false so it's a boolean so is match so if it is not match if not is match then we are again going to try an error and if if it is uh, it is it is being matched then we are going to return the user so in here in the catch block we are going to simply write that what's an error that is return unable to login in this file we are going to simply like response back response back with the status 200 and the user that is the user and yeah that's it now we are going to check our function so let's move on to the postman and we are going to create a new request in here we can create a new request add request in here login user and it's going to be saved in the mongo mongo schema and it's it is going to be a post request so we are going to provide post and it's the local host 3000 users login and we are going to simply copy it from here 
uh, sorry you copy it from here email and password and just paste into our third party we're going to select the raw and also the json and in here we're going to provide the email and password now let's look that we are going to get the uh the user back or not yeah we can see that we have got the user back now if we like if we wrong out our uh, incorrect our password now if we send back we can see unable to log in so it's very easy to do but there is a caveat in this that is in here in the postman if we like create the user with the same email we can see that uh, it will it is going to create the same user but it will also give the message oh one second maybe yeah db.js in email yeah it will handle the if we save the user with the same email then it will be handled by the mongodb that is will give the error so it's like uh, it's, very, it's very helpful or handful so now we are going to see once uh, one thing that is called jwt that is json web token so now in here for uh, getting the profile or it will be changed with the getting the profile so whenever the user is going going to like create a user or uh, logging in with the user then they can see the their profile not like uh, whenever we click on when we will be like click on this uh, endpoint hit on this endpoint then they can see it or uh, yeah this functionality is going to be changed in here so for using this or for understanding a whole point of this video we are going to install npm install json wave token so what it will do like uh, whenever we like uh, uh, whenever we create a user it is going to be like save a token it will be save a token in the mongodb and it will be sent back to the client and whenever the client is going to uh, use any functionality then they are going to use the same token that is being they are in the client side and get authenticated to perform any functionality so for understanding this whole thing we are going to like uh, uh, see how it can be done so now as the tokens is going to be uh, saved into our model so we are going to create a new uh, property that is tokens and it's going to be a array type because a user can get uh, more than one token at a uh, different point of time or uh, whenever they use uh, different devices so it's a token of tokens of an array and it's going to be a token and in here it's going to be like type of string and it is required So now in here, whenever we save it, like uh, now we are going to use an like for this user only a new method or a user defined method we are going to create that is like any any name that you can give like a generate or token in here in this function we are going to generate a new token for this particular user. So I am going to copy this name from here and we are going to define it into our db.js. So in here, let's say here I am going to create it. So like user schema, but we are not going to use the schema method or aesthetics. We are going to use for that particular user. So in here we, are, we have given the user schema dot method and the name. Uh, generate our token and it's going to be an asynchronous process and now we can define it here so
so in here we are going to take the user that is const user is equal to this it provides a document that we are going to perform the functionality and now we are going to use the big uh, in the json web token so in here we are going to create a new cons let's say jwt and we are going to require it from json web token and now we are going to define or uh, we are going to use the method of json web token so await it's a asynchronous process so await jwt and we are going to sign because this method will provide the token so jwt dot sign and it uh, need uh two or like the arguments parameters first parameter is the payload so the payload will be the id so the id of the user so we can get from the user dot id but the user dot id is an object id so we are going to change it and convert into the to a string method now the second parameter will be the uh one second yeah the second parameter will be the secret or private key can be anything but i'm going to use this is it is going to be like it is going to be a private but in here i'm going to simply write it this is my new course so the next argument can be uh the expires in yeah that's it so now it's going to return a token so let's write into this format like it's going to return a token now in here we are going to save it or uh, concatenate in the user dot tokens so user dot tokens user dot tokens dot concat the token and now just we are going to the user in here so the await user dot save and return the token because that, uh, that is going to be like the response back to the client side so that's it yeah this function is completely it is right but we are going to look into it so in here it's going to like uh, return a token so const token await and in here we are going to perform our uh, response back with two things that is user and token yeah now let's see that in action uh, so in here uh, we are going to see login create user and now if uh, we use jessica and or we are going to change the uh, email to jessica to alex and name to alex now if we save it yeah it's giving an error because uh, now we have changed the model in here so in here first we have to like uh, delete our user in here from here then we can see that it is giving the required result you can see now that the uh, user is being saved with the tokens and we are going to uh, give back to the the token token also now same thing we are going to provide to the login also because in here also the token will be generated and sent back to the client so in here we are going to use const token is equal to await and we are going to use in the user user dot generate auth token and we are sending back with user and token now if we log in with this email and password so we can see in the action in action 
So in here, we are going to provide email and password. Now, if we send it back, we are going to see that uh, two tokens is being generated in here. And, uh, and the latest token, that is this one, is going to send back to the client side. Now, one thing is here that uh, we are giving the client so much information here. We are going to provide like password and the tokens of all the tokens that are being there in the MongoDB. So we are going to like uh, sort in the like hide the values or hide the information from the user because it's for the security purpose. So for doing this, we are going to use another method, but it is a predefined we can say because in here we are going to use the user schema dot methods because we are going to use the method into a particular user and that's how uh, the writing that i'm going to use the same thing you have to use to, uh, to json because this means that uh, whenever we respond back to the client in here it is being converted into json.string file so in here we are just going to like uh, perform the another additional functionality in here because it is same as a json string file but we are adding some more functionality into this so for using this we are going to like just uh, use the following that is user means function Oh, shit. Uh, user function and now in here we are going to just say const user is equal to this dot we are going to change into an object so for doing this user this dot to object and in here we are going to delete delete user dot password that because that uh, that don't really need it and also delete the tokens and and just return the user yeah now if we go into our uh, postman and uh, run it again this uh, endpoint we can see that it's going to like just like give the user's uh, name as an email and the latest token that is being generated now we are going to use the tokens that are being saved in the mongodb and use into the another endpoints like uh, in here users dot users endpoint but the user don't want to see another user profile so it's going to be a user profile method so we are going to change the endpoint to users slash me and now for looking into a user's profile we are going to use that token specifically so we are going to use a term that is called the middleware so that means that let's say the new function or method that we name art is going to run before this functionality so for doing this we are going to create a new like folder again we are going to create a new folder let's say middleware and in here we are going to create a new file let's say art.js so in here what can we do so let's say we are going to create a const art and it's going to be an asynchronous process and also we are going to export back to the file so we are going to use module dot exports the art function and we are going to use in the this file so we are going to use const art is equal to require it from dot dot slash uh, dot slash middleware and art yeah 
So what's to be done in this uh, method? So now in here, it's a middleware, but it's used same functionality as the request response and also the next because the next is used for like for going to the another endpoint. Yeah. Now in here, first we are going to get the token from here. So for getting the token, we are going to use const token and it's going to be in the request dot header. And we are going to talk about this later authorization. And also one thing called replace because the authorization is being uh, used as uh, a string. So we are going to replace a barrier bearer space string with nothing. Yeah, that's it. The token is being generated here. Now we are going to verify this token, verify this token and generate the ID. So const decode. And in here we are going to use the uh, JWT method. So we are going to require it from JWT. Require it from JSON web token. So in here JWT verify verify and the token. That is a token. And also the secretary public key that is this is my new course. Now in this decode, there is the ID there of the user. So from here we can see if there is a user or not. So for looking into the user, we are going to simply say like uh, we are going to use await method and also we are going to use the model. So for this again, we are going to uh, use a user model or import it from the DB file. So require it from require it from dot slash dot dot slash utils db yeah now we get the user and after getting user we can use find one method in here we are going to provide the id that is id is to the token decode dot id and also we are going to verify with the tokens that is being there in the Mong mongoose mongodb so for that we are going to use tokens dot token and the token yeah that's it now if there is a user then it will perform the operations or return back with the user now if there is no user then we are say safely to say like uh, this is going to be a throw an error and uh, throw new error so request dot user is equal to user now there will be a catch block and here we are going to response back response back with status 404 and send back with uh, error or error in error in authentication It's going to be an string, so we are going to save it like this. Now, if it is run, then we are going to use the next method. So it will go to the endpoint after that. So now, in here in app.js, 
in here the all uh, in this one we are getting the user if it is right so there is no need of this we are going to simply like write request dot user yeah that's it now if we go to our postman we are going to use the endpoint of this get users, but also we are going to use get users the profile that we are want to. So let's say we are going to use this. So in headers, there is one thing called authorization that the same thing that we have written in the code. But in this key, there is a value. So the value will be the new one that we have used latest one like request this token is going to be used in here and it's going to be written for bearer and like this that's why we have used that to replace the bearer with nothing at all so now if we run this we are going to get back the users or a profile so finger cross yeah we get the profile back yeah that's it that's how we can do the getting the profile of an user so now one more thing remaining that is how can we log out from a system so for logging out we're going to create a new a new what new endpoint that is users and log out so in here we are going to use request and response and also we are going to use the auth middleware because after authenticating then we are going to remove it from the from the they can be log out from the devices so in here we are going to see how it can be done so for this it's going to return a token so that they can be log out from the system so for this we are also going to request dot token is equal to token so now in here we are going to see how it can be done so in here we are going to simply say like request no first thing we are going to also use the try and catch block and in here if it is right then it is say like response dot status of 500 and send back so in here we are going to use request dot users or user dot tokens and now we are going to use request dot user dot tokens dot filter because it's an array and it's going to retake token serially wise and if we are going to see the token dot token is not equal to the request dot token then it's going to return all the tokens that is not the request dot token now we are going to save it again using request await request sorry await request dot user dot save and response back with the status of 200 and send back with request dot user yeah that's it i have already created a new logout user get endpoint and you can see that i have provided the authorization and also we can see that we can get the alex at gmail.com like the, the user that we are going to get and we can see in here in our mongoose that uh, first we have to refresh it 
and now you can see that uh, only two objects are there now if we run again this file and we have to also change this token so let's say i'm going to take this token from here and just to take yeah now if i I'll copy it from here and uh, paste it in here and again send it back we get the uh, user and if we refresh it here again we can see that uh, we will get only one object yeah that's how we can log out from any uh, devices we can also uh, use the like uh, Netflix users. Like if we want to uh, log out from different devices, we can simply write in here the same thing. But uh, we can change here like uh, request dot user dot tokens is equal to an array. So it will do the same thing, but it will uh, log out from all the devices. Yeah, so that's it in this video. In this video, we have seen how can we add the security and also authenticate the user, and uh, how can we see that any other functionality can be done only through the authentication. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.